Hey, it's Mr. O for Music Hands. We're gonna spend today's session looking at making sweet beats inside GarageBand using the Beat Sequencer. I'm gonna show you my tips and tricks of how you can use it to get some awesome results. So grab your iPhone or your iPad and follow along. Let's get making. Peace. All right, here we are inside GarageBand. I've navigated across to my drum app and I've selected Beat Sequencer from the submenu and I've got a beat programmed here ready for you to go. So just a quick overview, you'll see your different sounds down the left hand side. You can access your patches from this menu. You can also load up some presets here. This is a randomizer. I'm not gonna do that to my beat. I have my project settings on and off to trigger my pattern. I have to have the step button selected to actually write sounds in or out. My velocity, change the volume of my sounds. Note repeater, which we'll look at in the next example. Chance, which is our main focus of this example. So if I play my drum beat or just my beat, you'll notice that chance is active. That's how much of a chance or a likelihood this sound is gonna trigger. So if I turn this up, it's likely gonna trigger. You'll see the first hi-hat hasn't triggered yet. So let me bring my chance down for this and maybe up a little bit for this one. I'm gonna keep these at about seven. Now up full, you'll see they're always gonna trigger. Where I found the chance working really well So I've got a cool clave sounding snare pattern and it's triggering more human way because there's a chance that some So it works really well to keep your rhythm sounding fresh. Cool. Maybe I want to change up my sound. Yeah, let's settle with that, that's groovy. So I've used the chance button to make sure that I've got a nice bit of variation within the rhythm. And if I just play for you now, a little bit of a song with the drum beat, this is what we Okay, very cool. We're gonna move on and look at another feature within this drum sequencer. And for that, I'm gonna load up. So first things first, you'll notice I've got two sections. When you're creating a rhythm, sometimes you want it to have a longer measure. The way we do that in the sequencer is to tap on the eye and I set my length rather than 16 to 32. That gives me two measures. Of course, you can make that more. So that's the first thing I've done, created a two. Cool, you'll hear some trap style quick hats and quick snares. That's what we wanna look at. If I look, I can set any of these bricks to have multiple. Really quick and handy way to do it. It's very, very cool for making the traps. You'll see I've got that triggered on my hi-hat pattern where I've got some singles in the first measure and then a few doubles and even a, a four, a 16th note pattern there. And I've also got that happening down here on my snare where I'm triggering multiple.
You might also want to replace a sound. I've brought a second kick in here. If I tap on my channel and I look at my kit piece, I've brought another kick in. So I've got a sub kick as well as a normal kick in my song. And that just creates a very cool. You might want to change one of your sounds to for a crash or a snap to vary what you're creating. So let's hear what we've got. But notice there's nothing green at the top bar up here. So I need to record this into my song. I'm going to hit the red button. Cool. I could listen to that song for a bit longer. I'm digging that vibe. I think the sequencer works quite well in that scenario. So let's go on. Let's look at one more. If I load up a rock genre, you're thinking, right, how can we sequence in the rock genre? Um, let me jump in. First thing I want to say is I've changed my patch from here, electronic to not percussion, but acoustic. So now when we program using the sequencer, it's going to apply an acoustic drum sound to the sequence like this. Sweet. The feature I want to look at within the rock is the loop start and end. You'll see I've dragged the end here of my tom, one of my high toms or um, my floor tom even, I've dragged that loop to be shorter. Now what that means is as the loop cycles around, that one's going to play quicker than the other parts would have. So essentially it creates a variation in the rhythm. And I've also done that in this channel as well. So my toms, as it cycles around, feels like they're kind of shifting around. The drummer's playing slightly differently. And I just think it creates more of an organic vibe to my drum track. What I've also done is added a little bit of the chants from the example of the house music onto my toms here as well, so that they're not striking every time. And then it would be quite wise to set some velocity like we did before. And I haven't done any note repeats in this because I don't think it necessarily fits the genre, but you might do, let's say, a double kick. Let's hear that. So that double kick triggered quite well there at the beginning. I've already recorded this one into our track. So let's have a little listen to what it sounds like. Okay, pretty rad, right? Pretty crazy. One more thing before we jump out of this rock style, maybe you want to take it away from that kind of thrash metal and you might want to go in here and give it a little bit of a swing vibe as well. So let's uh, throw in a light 16th note swing or a heavy one. Almost makes it a little bit more Beastie Boys, I think. Or more of the shuffle style swing. Depending on what style you're going for, that might be a useful feature. So that looks at all of these main icons and how they can be used to create a pretty cool drum beat. But you might be thinking, is that it, Mr. O? Anything else? Yeah, I think there's a couple more things that might be useful for you. So let me use this example. If I tap on my track settings, I can play this pattern in reverse. And that actually creates a really cool vibe. I might use that as a break in my rhythm. I can also ping pong it like this. But that kick on the first beat maybe throws that ping pong off a little bit. And even if you're feeling a bit rag, a bit random, a bit crazy, you can throw it into uh, the random setting if you want. 
So apart from setting the way my sequencer sequences, whether it's going forwards or back, I can actually add that type of example to a track. So if I tap on step length, when I play the sound, maybe I want it to play as a, as a triplet sound instead. Maybe I want to do that for my shaker. Maybe straighten it up. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I've already pressed the red button and recorded it into the track. So you get a little vibe of how that fits. There you go, the beat sequencer inside GarageBand. Okay, there we are, some of my top tips and tricks. Hopefully, you've been making some pretty cool beats from what you've learned in today's session. Remember last week we looked at quantization, merging tracks, and plugins, effects, distortion, overdrive. You might want to apply some of those skills onto your beat sequencer, so drop back and have a look at last week's session. We're gonna continue looking at making sweet drum beats next session. I've got some more awesome information for you. So I'll see you then. Peace.